Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return with rank 4 of our F123 My Team Career Mode. Yes, we're back this evening here for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Formula 1 is returning towards Europe for the first time in this season. Of course, if you missed out on the video uh, that went live earlier on today from Albert Park Australia, I would highly recommend going back and checking it out. So far, we're learning a lot. We're getting better and better slowly but surely on F1 23 and fingers crossed as well this weekend we've got a few more upgrades going on to the car but of course if you're enjoying this series um obviously make sure as well that you get yourself subscribed for daily formula one action of course as mentioned before we're going to be doing a video of my team every single day until we crown ourselves as world champions so yeah definitely obviously if you don't want to miss out on those make sure you hit that subscribe button click the bell notification as well so you don't miss out on future videos of course we've got a lot of videos going out over the course of this week but lots of upgrades then going on to the car uh, before this weekend you can see we're, we're slowly inching away uh, from Alpha Tauri in terms of performance there uh, we're pretty much tied with Alfa Romeo and Williams just in front so still only the 10th best car in Formula 1 but I'm hoping if we can try and bring some big upgrades this weekend then hopefully we can try and push on a little a bit further there and there we go rotor speed upgrade um, should be on the car very very soon as well won't be on the car ready uh, for Azerbaijan this weekend but of course still just earning more and more R&D as well there is really really helping us out um, but yeah I'm enjoying F123 let me know your thoughts and feelings about the game so far of course um, obviously trying to answer as many of your comments and questions as I possibly can but yeah let's do this thing though Azerbaijan Grand Prix round four of the year hopefully we can continue on our steady progress up the order Well, I had completely forgotten then, of course, that this is our first sprint race of F1 23 as well. So, nine lap sprint, of course, on Saturday before the Grand Prix on Sunday. Unfortunately, the new format, of course, that was used in the Azerbaijan Grand Prix hasn't been brought to the game. It is still a singular qualifying session inside F1 23. Okay, um, front lock in there. I mean, yeah, if, if ever there was a weekend where we need to make sure the brake bias is perfect. Baku is probably that track. No room for errors on the brakes around this venue. So you're going to have to be very, very careful uh, in that regard. And that's exactly what I mean there. Just knew immediately he was going to get away from me. So just having to bail out sooner rather than later. Our first lap then here of the track climatization was far from perfect. The second lap is going to be a much fairer representative. Then I think we're going to be agonizingly close to the purple score. Yeah, 560 of 580 that will give it one final attempt but yeah, not, yeah immediately yeah it's just this track is going to be tough right we're jumping in then to our fuel simulation run of course Baku in recent F1 games has actually been a very very easy track to race on that I don't think is going to be the case on F1 23 you're now going to much better idea as to why the drivers struggle so much around this circuit during Grand Prix weekends just no room for error so yeah we are going to have to be very very careful around here Hopefully, we're still going to be able to set some decent times, though. Well, three tenths down as we head out of the final couple of turns. Let's hope we can try and claw that delta back uh, to where we need it. Then, of course, this has always been the party trick around back. You could often be quite a long way down on the delta and then recover it as you head up towards the start-finish line. And looks like we're going to be able to do that once again here on F123. Can we just blend the throttle up towards the line? Try and get that purple? Not quite. And last but certainly not least, then once again, the full race simulation run. So it's going to be even more important this weekend with that sprint race as well. But will the sprint race potentially allow us to get a bit of a crazy weekend? We'll wait and see. I mean, Baku often uh, delivers the carnage anyway. So I'm sure a sprint race added to that, you know, it might be that we have to go super aggressive early on in the race and then just try and hang on to positions later on. We will wait and see. Our Baku starting to turn into a bit of a traffic paradise at the moment as we're trying to finish off my race sim run. Has been probably the easiest of the challenges we've done so far. I feel like I'm getting the car tuned in now. Still running a little bit wide there every time, but if the game's going to allow me to do it, then maybe I'll be a little bit cheeky around this venue as well. I think we're going to have to take uh, some fresh engine components as well 
into qualifying, of course, with the extra long weekend as steady on. Lewis Hamilton there has just dive bombed me, despite the fact he's let me through earlier on in the lap. Now he's going to dive bomb me again down at the final corner, and we're going to potentially now have our racing run absolutely ruined right at the very end. We're going to have to drain the battery as we head out through the final couple of corners here, and while well, 1.2 seconds back, it's going to require a mammoth effort as we head back up towards the start-finish line. Then I think Lewis has absolutely screwed me here. We're going to get pretty close again. Only two tenths away, but Hamilton has got hell to pay. Let's get into qualifying. Well, it seems like we haven't got any of the new sprint qualifying rules then inside F123 at the moment. I don't think they've actually been confirmed as guaranteed for the rest of the real-life season anyway. So that might explain it. But yeah, we have got three sets of soft compound tyres as we jump into qualifying here. So I'm hoping Charles Leclerc's finishing a lap. Um, well, he's, he's backed out of it anyway, so I'm trying to start one. And that is immediately not the line at Turn 1. Slap the wall. And I forgot to put the fresh power unit components in as well. So how bad are we looking engine wear-wise? Um, yeah, it's only the gearbox, so it shouldn't cost us too much in terms of performance. That was close on the way into the castle section. Very, very close on entry, but we are pushing a little way behind Logan Sargent as we come towards the end of Sector 2. But I feel like, yeah, this final sector is going to be very, very strong for us, hopefully throughout the entirety of the weekend as we head up towards the start finish line then shortest run to the line make sure we don't go over the pit entry line though otherwise that would be a penalty it's going to be a 44-6 there only good enough for last after the first runs but we know there's a lot of time to find and there's other cars rounding their final lap then here from Baku qualifying we're just about to start our own I think we're actually giving Fittipaldi a little bit of slipstream behind us as well so hopefully I'm going to try and help him bump up the order slightly but We've got to get this final lap nailed here if we want any chance of a good starting position for the sprint. As Fittipaldi there, do we see him move up the order? Can we gain some time out of turn one? Yes, we can immediately. Half a second gain. That is perfect. And a bit of a lock-up at turn two, though, just to, you know, balance it back out, if you will. Max Verstappen sets the benchmark of 42-0, so 2.6 seconds away from that at the moment. But Fittipaldi, he's out then in Q1 see they're only able to go up to P18 so I don't actually know what time our teammates set but we were three tenths down at the end of sector one a little bit of time through the castle section of course we nailed that on our first run so not too surprising as we plunge down the hill just feels so so scary on the brakes still on this game still learning a lot every single race we do final proper corner of the lap that felt better than my previous run they're using all of the curbing on the exit we are going to be eight tenths up then as we round our way through the final couple of turns, smooth this run out of there. And we're going to be still, by the looks of it, behind Fittipaldi here. Our team at an entire second faster than ourselves at the moment. But will we move up off the back row at the very least up over the line? I think we went P19. No, P20 in the end. So not great, but not bad. And there we go then, Lewis Hamilton fastest at the end of Q1 there. So clearly Mercedes have brought the pace this weekend. Three different winners in the first three Grand Prix. let's not forget there. But yeah, Fittipaldi, myself, a Bottas out in Q1. Both Alfa Romeos out in Q1, so disappointing for them. But it was Nick DeFries who got into the 2-2 and -2 Motorsport sandwich. Let's get into the sprint race, though. Nine laps first of all here from Baku. This is probably going to be crazy. Forget pit stops, forget fuel management. It's pedal to the metal all the way here as we get ready for today's sprint. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's sprint. World champion Max Verstappen starts from pole position. Sergio Perez lines up alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Sainz, Russell, Leclerc, Hamilton, Norris, 
Fernando Alonso, Gasly, Ocon, Oscar Piastri, Albon, Stroll, Magnussen, Hulkenberg, Sonoda, Bottas, Fittipaldi, De Vries, Mr. Monaco, Sargent, Mr. Monaco. And with preparations almost complete, let's head trackside for today's sprint. Right, well, here we are then. Trackside ready for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix sprint race then. In terms of strategy, it reckons it's possible. You know what? We're going to try it. Yeah, only... Why has it come up with a warning? That's that's scary. Um, don't know what... Oh, so mandatory tyre has to be mediums or hards then. Okay, so that's why we've got to do that. Um, but yeah, this, this is probably going to get quite crazy, I think, in the sprint. Now, just remember, every time... Whoever's out-qualified the other one, at Fittipaldi and I, so far this season, has gone on to out-race them as well. So, hopefully we can try and break that curse today. We're two for two so far in qualifying with Fittipaldi. Obviously, we're two one up on races. I don't know if sprints count towards that. I am very, very excited to see whether we're going to get our fourth different winner of the season here. Sainz, Leclerc, and Verstappen. So far, previous winners this championship. I think a likely one has got to be Perez here, of course. Has often gone well around Azerbaijan, but purple lineup then on the grid. Got Fittipaldi and Defries just in front. Sergeant and Joe Wanyu just behind. Plenty of throttle. Ready for the start of the Azerbaijan sprint. Five red lights. It's lights out, and away we go then, making sure the car doesn't bog down. And actually a good, clean, tidy start as we head down towards turn one. We're on the internal combustion engine there. Just getting worn by Mark, but shouldn't cost us too much in this weekend there. As down the inside of Fittipaldi, we'll try and have a look then. We've got to be brave early on in this sprint. You know what? We will slip by there. Nick DeFries as well. The same idea. Goes straight past his teammate at the start of this race. It looks like one of the Mercs has had a lightning start. They're over to P2 behind one of the Red Bull cars. Down the inside of Yuki will go. And Yuki Tsunoda absolutely being had early on this afternoon then. The dream start for us, straight up into P17 then, gaining three spots on this open lap. Remember, of course, it is only nine laps here in the sprint, so every position gained early on. Hopefully, you won't have to try and defend for too long later on in the afternoon. Of course, only the top eight, though, score points on sprint race Saturday. So, yeah, there is less availability for points here if we had a bit of a miracle run. But let's just keep our head down, of course, making our way through the castle section. That start was okay. Mark, if you if I if I gained three places on a lap one on F122, we would have been absolutely beside ourselves with joy. But clearly he's got higher standards for me on F123. Stappen led though at the end of lap one, but we've got more and more battles going on outside the top ten. I think that's Alex Alban. How many times have we seen him trying to defend for his life? come a Sunday so far this series. The Williams driver, of course, we've seen in real life as well, just how quick he can be on Saturday's running. But yeah, that Williams car is still not great in race trim. So yeah, he's just trying to create a bit of a roadblock at the moment. But hopefully, once the DRS gets enabled, that's still set to lap three in the sprint races. Yeah, once the DRS gets enabled, maybe we can try and get some freebies already on the minimap. The gap that Verstappen's built up at the front of the field, I think it's Hamilton trying to defend for his life behind him from Checo Perez. But yeah, Max Verstappen absolutely romping clear at the front of the field. Looks like De Vries now has lost the DRS to the cars in front. So I probably need to try and find a way around De Vries sooner rather than later as we should. I think now he's just picked it up again off Nico Hulkenberg. So can never quite get the timing down as yet De Vries has now got DRS once more. Well, I haven't really battled Nick De Vries much since that opening race in Sakir, but hopefully I'm not going to battle him too much here either, to be completely honest. Well, I'm trying to move past the Alpha Tauri as soon as possible. Just gaining, gaining, gaining on him to the outside will go to get back down towards turn one. That's late on the brakes. We had to really try and slide the car into the apex then, just to make sure that we got it slowed down. They're creating as long a braking zone as we possibly could, but now we've lost the DRS and so Nico Hulkenberg in front. So maybe didn't time that as well as I would have wanted. Still battling going on in front of us though, so hopefully they'll continue to Constantina up, which they absolutely will. Lance Stroll, I think, on the other hat of Magnussen. So surely we're going to get back in the range. I mean, it's only Saturday and they're not even battling for points, but this little scrap in front of me is absolutely sensational. 
to watch at the moment there. Both Haskars, Oscar Piastri and Lance Stroll duking it out like their careers depend on it. As we're just trying to fight our own car to try and hang with them at this stage of the afternoon and keep Nick DeFries at bay. But both Alpha Towers breathing down our neck. But yeah, I think now Stroll has broken free at the front. But we are really struggling with front tyre temps at the moment. And that's not helping the rears out either because they're just sliding around trying to find the grip wherever they can in the traction zones. Hulkenberg now has broken out of the DRS range, and I think unless they continue to battle, which it doesn't look like they will, we might be just okay, trying to consolidate. <gasps> oh! <laughs> oh, that was scary. Full tank slapper in towards the castle, and yeah, I think that just proves the point. We need to try and consolidate this P16 ready for the main event. I really have lost all confidence on these tyres, though, late on in the day. I don't know what we've done, just over-pushing them way too much early on this afternoon. And now we're getting so much front locking, so much rear locking, and a lot of sliding around as well. Bottas now all over my gearbox. And look how much we've already lost to the Haskars. You can really absolutely ruin your tyres on this game. Oh, not down the inside there, Bottas. I would just jump out of the way of the AI. I clearly still like to go for the overtake. Okay down into there. I'm going to move the brake bias even further forward at the moment. And actually, that's worked out quite nicely for us. Able to keep Bottas at bay for now. Might be able to get him back out of the ER, uh, sorry, DRS range as we head through the final couple of corners. Go on. Yep, there we go. One second again. So that's good. Then he won't get the free time this time. But two laps to go here from Baku. Yeah, we are really just trying to hang on. We definitely have got an issue with the tyres, Mark. Seconds. Yeah, I, I don't need reminding of that either, to be honest. It's all about survival in the sprint. Final lap then here from Baku, and now we have got Zhou Guanyu all over my gearbox. He's going to have a look to the left, uh, right hand side, even. Oh, big squeeze on the Alfa Romeo car. We will just about hang on again for now. I mean, these tyres are gone. Absolutely gone here. Um, definitely have to make sure we nurse them a lot more in the race tomorrow. Just take it easy. You cannot overstretch the tyres early on in the stint otherwise you absolutely wreck them it's so much more realistic but so difficult to learn and wind our way though around this final lap still Joe Guanyu still breathing down my neck Max Verstappen though is going to win the first sprint race of 2023 and continue to extend his lead at the top of the championship but I think Joe Guanyu tried to send it down at the end of sector 2 and might just to compromise himself horrible oversteer you can see still how much we're fighting the car on this final lap, we've lost so much pace to the Haskars further up the road. The Hulkenberg going to be 10 seconds clear come the chequered flag there. And even gets Magnussen over the line as well. But up towards the start-finish line then, P16 in our first sprint race of the year. Not perfect, but we'll take it. And that's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. So let's review the updated driver standings. Max Verstappen should be pleased with his performance, making gains at the top of the table. With the sprint wrapped up, we now have our grid lineup for the big race tomorrow. Be sure to join us then for what will no doubt be a fantastic race. Well, there we go then. Max Verstappen, Victor here in the sprint. First time he's stood on the top of the podium since round one of the year in Bahrain. Sergio Perez P2, head of Hamilton, who I think takes his first podium of the year there. For Mercedes. Charlotte Leclerc beats out Sykes, Russell, Lando and Fernando Alonso are rounding out our top 10 there. But yeah, P16 for us in the sprint. I don't know if we're going to take some grid penalties, but let's get into it though for the proper Grand Prix. And a warm welcome to you from Azadlik Square, heart of Baku and home of course to the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. With high speeds, tight corners and few runoff zones, many are expecting a safety car here today. So our drivers will have to stay very much on their toes and hopefully out of the barriers. Baku City Circuit then. It's an unpredictable 3.7 mile track around the streets of the Azerbaijan capital. 20 turns for our drivers to navigate today, including the infamous Turn 8, one of the tightest and most challenging corners of the season. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he'll start from pole position. Edging out Sergio Perez who lines up P2. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Leclerc, Sainz, Russell, Norris, Fernando Alonso, Gasly, Albon, Stroll, 
Oscar Piastri, Hulkenberg, Magnussen, Joe Bottas, Sonoda, Ocon, Fittipaldi, Sargent, De Vries, Sargent. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. And joining me for today's race once again is Anthony Davidson. Let's talk about Mr. Monaco. They've got that grid penalty to worry about, of course, which puts them on the back foot from the get-go. Yes, it's not the position you want to be in at the start of the Grand Prix. Penalties like this put you in amongst the traffic. But we know they have more pace than those around them, so I expect they'll make some strong progress in the first few laps. Right, here we are then, trackside once again for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. And I still don't know why it's coming up with a customised strategy there. But, um, yeah, we're going to have to really, really nurse that. You know what, honestly, honestly, I'm tempted to try a two-stop here. We've seen how odd the strategies work so far on F123. I feel like Baku as well uh, could be a track that this really plays into our hands due to the nature of safety cars. I'm going to gamble it. We're going to try and see whether a two-stop can work around this venue this afternoon. 22 places worth of grid penalties. Sadly, we still haven't actually got um, the ICE sorted, so that's going to be a world of hurt. But let's try it. Well, I'm not sure whether it's a good or a bad sign, the fact that we're starting on the same tyres as Logan Sargent. One another driver that's still yet to score points in this season. But, yeah, we are really throwing caution to the wind here this afternoon, seeing if this strategy can work out in our favour. I mean, we haven't got too much at stake, luckily, uh, even if it does go a bit pear-shaped. But ready on the grid, then, for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, waiting on those five red lights. Mighty long hold once again there, but it is lights out, and away I don't go for getting slightly about the throttle. As you can see, Ocon trying to have a look to the inside of Bottas down at Turn 1. Which can try and utilise the extra grip provided by the soft compound tyres. Oh, almost contact between myself and Fittipaldi down at Turn 1 there as he almost just cuts across me. Is he trying to avoid Bottas on his inside there, not trying to throw blame in our teammates' direction whatsoever there. But around the outside, and Nick De Vries will go then off the start. Looks like Sargent has really got off well further up. As we'll try and think about having a look now. We'll, we'll play it safe, we'll play it sensible at the start of this one. The Sargent's up to like P14 there. Mega start by our fellow soft compound runner. But yeah, we've just got to try and play the long game today, of course. We're going to have a lot of laps where we're gaining a lot of time. And some laps where we're going to be losing a lot of time as well. But luckily the Azerbaijan pit lane, not the longest in Formula 1 either. So two stops around here can often work better than they would do at many other venues. Just slipping down the inside of Valtteri Bottas then in towards turn 8. And we will make it through before we get into the castle section there. So we've survived the opening half a lap or so here from back. In. Definitely noticing the extra grip on these soft compound tyres as well. But like I said, of course, with the way the strategies seem to be working so far, they can be very, very unpredictable on F123. So we're just going to see it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. This is going to be the other thing that has quite a big impact on the racing this afternoon is who battles and where. Seems like, again, the DRS is so powerful on this game as Sonoda and Ocon trying to dispute P17. We're going to dispute P19 with our teammate Fittipaldi. Just like get around the outside of them. Cheeky little move early on. Going to elevate us back inside the top 20 of this GP. But yeah, it is going to be a question of DRS trains as well. As you can see, everyone's still very, very closely bunched up early on. Red Bull look like they are back in control here in Baku. Should be a track that suits their car. Then again, I thought that about Saudi and Australia, and they didn't win either of those. Really making a conscious effort early on this race not to over push the tyres too much. You know, trying to avoid front locking, trying to avoid wheel spin on corner exit. If we want this strategy to work, we are going to have to be gentle on the tyres. There was all a little bit of a mistake from Joe Guan Yu in front. That might leave him vulnerable to Esteban Ocon and Yuki Sonoda as we head out of turn two. They're off onto the outside of the Chinese driver. And again, we've just got to sit back, play the patience game. Um, but we have also got to make sure that we are making overtakes here. We cannot be afraid to try and slip by as Ocon has done exactly that to Joe, who's also on softs. Oh, here we go. Sonoda, Joe Guan Yu going side by side back down towards Turn 1. I have lost the DRS. So I can really do with them fighting just a little bit more there as Turn 1 
so, so difficult to get the car slowed down there. Slap the wall as we head through. Is there still side by side in front of me? Don't know who's going to be able to hang on to this one. But yeah, so, so difficult this track. Just feel like I've got no confidence on the brakes down in towards that first corner there. As here goes Sonoda again, though. This is not done between the Alpha Tower and the Alpha Romeo. Big cadence break on the way in. And now we are back in this battle. I really just put in a conscious effort at the moment on trying to hang close to Yuki Sonoda and Zhou Guan Yu here. Don't really think we're going to be able to try and make a move on either of them unless they lose the DRS. But yeah, this is a tough race so far. Felt like every race so far this season, we've learned a lot, we've made good progress, but here in Baku really does feel like it's taken a bit of a step backwards. I think it accentuates um, just the AI strengths early on on F123, and also, you know, this track I don't really think suits our car either all too much, just because it is so underdeveloped early on in this game. It's a big learning curve, um, but I mean, yeah, if we get to the end of this one in one piece, I think we can probably be quite happy with that. Oh, there we go. Haskar into the pit lane. Though at the end of lap seven, as Sonoda and Zhou Huan Yu are once again going to try and dispute that place. We are going to pit at the end of this one, so nice to know that someone else is likely on the same strategy as myself. But yeah, you can just see now how much we're sliding around, struggling with the lack of grip left on these tyres. But we have looked after them much better than we did the mediums in the sprint. Well, it'd be nice if Zhou Huan Yu peels into the pit lane as well, to be honest, at the end of this one, just so we can still got someone to chase because I feel like that would benefit me quite a lot early on in this race, as yet for the first time then we have now lost the DRS to the Alfa Romeo car there. Sonoda is absolutely checked out in front of him, uh, but one of the Williams into the pit lane then. I'm guessing that's Albon, the other Haskar as well, boxing, so both Haskars going on this strap. How bad is the pit lane? Still got to try and push on the entry, but we'll get it slowed down nice and tidy then. So we are going to be at the back of the field, in this Grand Prix, but you know, it should be the likes of uh, Yuki Tsunoda, Zhou Guan Yu, that we can really undercut in this race. And that's what I'm hoping we can obviously do to try and give ourselves the advantage later on, of course. We've got to try and get half a pit stop now and half a pit stop later, uh, but it is not going to be easy. Let's just monitor the gap to Magnussen and get on with it. Cars peeling into the pit lane then as we get towards the end of lap 10, so I'm not sure. I think Sergeant then might be trying to stay out right the way through to the end of the Grand Prix, depending on what tyres, of course, he goes on to. Yep, hard tyres for Sargent, so he is trying to go to the end, but I mean, look at this, we've already made up the pit stop on Enzo Fittipaldi, so we clearly aren't doing too badly in this race at the moment. Hopefully, we're going to be able to try and get round our teammate nice and quickly as well there, as Magnussen six seconds up the road, so we're not really losing too much to him. Come on, Enzo, don't battle this too hard. Round the outside, a little bit scary, but we pulled it off. I mean, though, you can see already Fittipaldi three and a half seconds back on this lap alone. So this is just how big the delta can be between fresher and older tyres there. And this is why I wanted to try the two-stop to see if it could work out for us. Because, of course, not only are we gaining a lot of time now, but we'll also gain a lot right towards the end of the afternoon when they're on old dying hards and I'm still on fresher medium tyres. So, yeah, I'm hoping, I'm really hoping this pays off for us today. Zhou Guan Yu into the pit lane then, so he was a car that we were battling with. And we're going to be a long way ahead of him. There we go, Ocon and Sonoda into the pit lane as well. So Sonoda, what tyres is he on actually? No, he has gone hard. I could just read then for a second and it said medium still, so I didn't know what his strategy was going to be, but yeah, he's on hard towards the end of this race. So now we've just got to try and get to about the end of lap 15, lap 16, Still with these tyres in good nick. And then we're just going to be trying to hunt down as many places as we can lay on. Well, here comes Esteban off on though. End of lap uh, 13. Nick DeFries diving into the pit lane, but it'll give me some free DRS in the process. As Ocon, you can just see that, gets all the way alongside. And then slowly just starts dropping back. We may as well use the Alpine though. And his fresher tyres to our advantage. Just drag me along, Esteban. Take me to the top 10. Oh, Alex Albon out of the Grand Prix. So that, oh, I mean, that would have been perfect for a safety car for us, but I don't think we're going to get it. But Albon, again, another mechanical failure there. That's definitely not the line out onto the back straight. But yeah, these soft tyres, only really good enough, I'd argue, for seven laps, to be completely honest. And both since we're just trying to take in the extra one. But, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's it's really not looking good for either of our cars. They're Fittipaldi a long way behind anyone. Uh, we've got McLaren in, Oscar Piastri then, so he's also 
on the same two stop. But, yeah, I'm not sure where we're going to end up in all of this. It might be a battle between myself and Nick DeFreeze. We should be clear of Fittipaldi, though. Well, this set of tyres have hung on better than the previous set, but 10 laps to go then here from Baku. And yeah, like I said, I think a lot of it late on is just going to be trying to push close back up to Nick DeFreeze and Joe Granu here. Fittipaldi's having a bit of a nightmare weekend. Oh, careful. Might have tipped it into the pit lane even more aggressively than I'd originally anticipated, but we slowed the car down still. We kept it all in one piece. There is Kevin Magnussen just in front of me again. Then. So we basically have followed Magnussen pretty much right the way from the get-go. He's gone hard, though, to the end of this race, which is an interesting choice. But anyway, heading back out of pit lane then. We're going to be a few seconds behind. Whoa, behind Nick DeFries. That's one way to put some heat into those rears. But yeah, I reckon there's still a few places to be had by the end. Oh, the other has of Nico Hulkenberg. I forgot he was on a similar strategy as well then, so he's boxed once more in this Grand Prix and is now all over the back of Nick de Vries. But, yeah, I'm sort of looking at that huge gaggle of cars at the road and wondering who might be catchable, who might not by the end of this thing. Um, driving like that, none of them are going to be catchable. So, there we go. Valtteri Bottas clearly had enough. He's going to pit again then in this race, so he's going to try and go really fast towards the end of this one. But, yeah, the Flying Finn has promoted us back into P19. Well, I don't know what's going on just in front of me, but it looks like Sergeant DeFries and Hulkenberg are still disputing P16 because they are just losing bags of time. And we are now right there with them. Look how slow Sergeant is as we try and put the power down all over the back of the Williams. I think his hard tyres are not in great shape. Had that mega start to the Grand Prix, but then since then has basically just gone backwards throughout most of the afternoon. Don't really want to lose any time stuck behind him. Oh, a little bit sketchy there. Never really want to go side by side through those couple of corners. But we'll make it through there as I was so worried he was going to dive bomb me. So uh, the AI have a tendency to dive bomb there and it doesn't go well for you or them. So nice that we've disposed of Sergeant. Six laps to go. Nick to freeze next. And now I think Yuki Sonoda starting to struggle as well because both the freeze and I are closed in on him. At a rapid rate and not so. Yeah, this race is still definitely coming back to us late on in the afternoon. Looking highly unlikely that we're going to quite get as big a result as we did in Australia. But I think that was very much the perfect storm for us at that stage. Is yeah, don't want to run into the back of Nick DeFries. Might be able to get both Alpha Towers out of the final corner there. As again, don't really want to go for a move into here. May as well just sit back, try and use as much of the battery as we possibly can out of the final turn there as Sonoda... He's ran so, so well so far this season, but this race definitely has not been won for him. There is to the outside, and Nick DeFries will go. Surely we're both going to pick up the DRS off of Yuki as well, then. That's one Alpha Tauri navigated, and hopefully we're about to get the other then. As Yuki Sonoda... <gasps> that was scary. Really tried to put me in the wall there. We couldn't really go anywhere else down towards one because I didn't know where DeFries was going to hide, but we have completed the double overtake then. We are back into P16 of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Five laps to go. I mean, Zhou Guanyu is a long, long way up there, about seven seconds clear, but the mediums are working well. Looks like Hulkenberg then with two laps to go was found a way around Zhou Guanyu. I could really do with them battling just a little bit towards the end of this GP. Get a couple of freebies for myself, but I'm not convinced we might just be able to get Zhou. Um, but yeah, I think Hulkenberg probably a bit too quick in that Haas car, but yeah, felt like we've looked after the tyres a whole lot better in the main event than we did in the sprint race. 16, it doesn't sound great on paper, but when we consider we went on the alternate strategy just to try and learn, it's, it's not bad. Well, about to start then the final lap here of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, and I guess the real question we've got to ask ourselves is, do we okay, think we could have scored or finished race. higher had I not hit twice? And to be honest... I'm not convinced we would have done much better doing the normal strategy here. So we learnt a lot from this race. The result might not be a steady improvement like we've had in recent other events. But P16, with all things considered, I don't think is too disappointing around here. Unless, of course, we can take a huge chunk of time at Zhou Guanyu on this final lap. He's definitely struggling in that Alfa Romeo. But I think yeah, so are we there. A lot of lock-in all four wheels. Max Verstappen though will win the Azerbaijan Grand Prix and become our first repeat winner of the 2023 Formula 1 season. Sergio Perez will follow him home for a Red Bull 1-2 there, but I think, yeah, that must be Charles Leclerc 
who hung right with them right to the very end. But I think, yeah, just overstretching these tyres slightly on the final lap there. So we just wanted to try and get close uh, to Zhou Guan Yu. Not quite going to happen for us this weekend. But, I mean, yeah, since we started last, don't forget, of course, after the penalties, I think to finish exactly where we did in the sprint race, we can't complain too much. Fittipaldi, an absolute nightmare weekend for him. Uh, will come away with last place there. But luckily, of course, beating out Williams still, making sure, obviously, we're focusing on our kank back battle with them early on this season. But out of the final couple of turns, though, here from Baku, like I said, it's not quite the constant progress we've made early on this season, but we are learning a lot still on F123. This is an intricate game. There are a lot of nuances to make a successful GP. But up towards the start-finish line, then, P22 to P16 doesn't sound brilliant. But you know what? It is all part of the learning curve. OK, pick up rubber and bring it home. It was a magnificent race and a drive right out of the top draw to take the win for Red Bull today. Well, Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today, but what set them apart from the rest? I really feel the track layout, combined with the track temperatures we saw today, suited their car. These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature, and the driver did a great job managing that as well. They just look so comfortable out there. It's like anything, it always looks so easy when it all just clicks. Here come today's winners. The team at Red Bull have done a phenomenal job recently and it's clear to see that they've put in the work and they should be so proud of the victory they've secured here. Have a look then at the driver's standings. Max Verstappen should be pleased with his performance, making gains at the top of the table. Some amazing talent out on the track today. But Anthony, who would you pick as your driver of the day? Max Verstappen seemed to just effortlessly weave through the other drivers today without a care in the world. He was definitely my driver of choice. Let's move on to the constructors. And pulling further ahead in the standings, it's Red Bull. Meanwhile, good work from Aston Martin this weekend, who pushed themselves further up the order. Well, what an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined us, and we'll see you for the next one. Well, there we are then. Max Verstappen once more back on top here in Formula 1. A perfect weekend for the Dutchman here in Baku. Perez will join him, though, on the podium. Half a tenth ahead of Charles Leclerc there come the checkered flag. So a mega battle going on between those two towards the end. Russell, Sykes, Hamilton, Alonso, Stroll. Uh, sorry, Alonso, Norris, Stroll. With Pierre Gasly picking up tenth place there. And the fastest lap bonus point. So good job done by him. 16th for us. A nightmare, like I said, for Fittipaldi in the end. Lucky not to... Lucky even, sorry, to end up on the lead lap. There are 47-7 fastest lap for him was really not the way I'm sure he would have wanted this weekend to go but it does mean championship wise the gap at the top opens up 22 points now clear for Max Verstappen at the top of the table but six points covering uh, Charles Leclerc Perez and Carlos Sainz there no other movers it looks like further down the roster uh, we do get displaced though by Oscar Piastri by virtue of countback unfortunately there Red Bull 25 points the gap opens up at the top of the constructors uh, Mercedes still in a very lonely P3 ahead of Aston Martin and Alpine there and still only seven teams have scored early on this season but thank you all so much for watching this video if you have enjoyed please do make sure to leave a like get yourself subscribed as well and we will be back tomorrow when formula one heads out to miami the return of the miami grand prix and then we'll be back later on that day as well with imola you guys do not want to miss it None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.